Okay, so we want to write the partial fraction decomposition for this slightly intimidating looking rational function. So we have a quadratic numerator and a cubic denominator. So I'm going to start by trying to factor this denominator if I can. Um, so let's see here. 24x squared minus 471x plus 1800 over. First thing I'm going to do is factor out an x. Pull up the GCF. We'd get x squared minus 30x plus 225. Okay, and then factor again. Okay, so I would need two numbers that multiply to 225 and add to negative 30. So notice if you take negative 15 times a negative 15, so this is 15 squared or negative 15 squared. So if I were to take x minus 15 times x minus 15 or x minus 15 squared, negative 15 times negative 15 would multiply to a positive 225 and negative 15 uh, plus a negative 15 would add to a negative 30. So this would factor in x minus 15 times itself or x minus 15 squared. Okay, so the form of this one is based on the factors of the denominator. So we have one linear factor that's unique and then we have a repeated linear factor. Yes, if we multiplied this out it would be quadratic, but we consider the factor to be x minus 15, not x squared minus 30x plus 225 because that is not fully uh, factored down, whereas this is. So this is a linear factor because it's the x here is raised to the first power, but it's a repeated linear factor because I could split this up as x minus 15 times another x minus 15. So we have linear factors here. One of them is distinct. So that will only give us one partial fraction. This one is repeated. So anytime you have a repeated factor, remember, it will give you um, this number of partial fractions, whatever its exponent is. So since it has an exponent of two, it will give us two partial fractions. One of them where that factor is just raised to the first power, and then another one where the factor is squared. If this was cubed, <clears throat> then we'd have three factors for it. We'd have x minus 15 to the first times x minus 15 squared and then times an x minus 15 cubed and so on. So we'll have three factors or three partial fractions I should say. Now since the factors are all linear then the numerators will just be constants like a, b, and c. Even this one remember is still a linear factor even though we could multiply this out and write it as a quadratic um, function the factor itself is x minus 15, which is linear. Okay, so now we have the form. So now what I'm going to do is take this equation here and multiply both sides by the greatest common or the least common denominator of all these fractions, which is x times x minus 15 squared. So if we do that, then the denominator on the left side would cancel entirely. We'd just be left with the numerator. The right side, so if I multiply this factor by x and x minus 15 squared, the x would cancel. And I'd be left with a times x minus 15 squared plus b. Here if I multiply this by x and x minus 15 squared, the denominator x minus 15 would cancel with one of these factors of x minus 15, but we'd still be left with b times x times x minus 15. Okay, And then if I multiply this last partial fraction by x and x minus 15 squared, the x minus 15 squared would cancel and we'd be left with c times x. All right, so now it's time to solve for a, b, and c. Now again, there's two methods we can use here. I'll show you two different ways to do this. Method one and method two. So method one is to multiply all of this out. So if I multiply all of this out here, so the left side, Of 
first I would have to multiply x minus 15 times itself. So we'd have a times x squared minus 30x plus 225. And then we'd have over here, I'm going to multiply the x times the x minus 15. So we'd have plus b times x squared minus 15x and then plus cx at the end. Okay, so I multiplied the x minus 15 times itself. I distributed the x here. Now I'm going to distribute the a and the b. So if I distribute the a, I would get ax squared minus 30ax plus 225a. If I distribute the b, I'm going to get plus bx squared minus 15bx and then plus cx. And then I'm going to collect like terms on the left side. So we have two terms with x squared. We have an ax squared plus a bx squared. So if we combine those, that would be a plus b x squared. We have three terms with x to the first power. So since this is the only one that's positive, I'm going to start with that one. So we have c minus 30a minus 15b times x. And then the only constant we have is plus 225a. Okay, so we have two quadratic polynomials that are equal to each other. The only way this can happen is if their coefficients are equal. So the coefficient of x squared is 224 on the left side, or is 24 on the left side, and a plus b on the right side. So that tells me that a plus b has to equal 24. Likewise, the coefficient for x to the first power is negative 471 on the left side, and it's c minus 30a minus 15b on the right side. So we're going to have c minus 30a minus 15b equals negative 471. And then finally, the constants, we'd have negative 1800 and just 225a over here. So we'll have 225a has to equal 1800. So we have a system of three equations that we'd have to solve to get a, b, and c. Well, as long as we know which order to approach this, this isn't actually too difficult of a system to solve, right? Because for the third equation, we just divide both sides by 225, 1800, divided by 225 on my calculator gives me a equals 8. So I have one of the coefficients. And now I plug that back in here. So a plus b, 8 plus b equals 24. So b would have to equal 16. And then plug both of those back in here. c minus 30 times a minus 15 times b equals negative 471. So if we multiply these and then add them to the other side, we would get, let's see, negative 471 plus 30 times 8 plus 15 times 16. We'd get c equals 9. So going back to the beginning, looking at the form that we had written down, our partial fraction decomposition would be a over x, so 8 over x, plus b over x minus 15, plus c over x minus 15 squared. Okay. Now I'm going to show you a much easier way to solve for a, b, and c. So you can do this in this case using a system of equations, or going back up here, when we first cleared the fractions, another option is to plug in numbers for x on both sides that would cancel some of these variables. So notice, for example, if I plug in x equals 0, particularly look at the, the right side here, if I plug in x equals 0, that's going to cancel off the b term and it's going to cancel off the c term since both of those are multiplied by x. 
and then I can solve for a. So if I plug in 0 for x, I have to plug it in on both sides. Then the left side, when I plug in 0, these will cancel. I'll just get 1,800. And on the right side, if I plug in 0, I'm going to get a times negative 15 squared plus b times 0 times negative 15 plus c times 0. So those just cancel. So we'd get a equals 1,800 divided by negative 15 squared, which is 8. Easy enough. Now, if I want to solve for um, c, I can plug in 15, because plugging in 15 will cancel out a and b. So let's plug in 15. So first, if I plug in 15 on the left side using my calculator, 24 times 15 squared minus 471 times 15 plus 1800, I get 135 on the left side equals a times 0 squared plus b times 15 times 0 plus c times 15. So again, a and b cancel this time. And so we get 135 equals c times 15. So c will equal 135 over 15, which equals 9. Okay. So the key thing there was we were plugging in a number that would cancel off two of these coefficients or two of these letters at once. We plugged in 0 that canceled off b and c at the same time because they share the factor of x. And we plug in 15 to cancel a and b at the same time because they share the factor of uh, x minus 15. Now, if I want to solve for b, then I would have to try to cancel off a and c, but those ones don't have a common factor. So I couldn't have started with this method of a goal of trying to find b first. But now that we know what a and c are, we can use these numbers. We can plug these back in here. And we can just pick a different number for x because I don't want to cancel off b, I want to solve for b. So I can plug in any number I want for x except I don't want to plug in 0 or 15 because I don't want to cancel off b. So I'm just going to plug in x equals 1 since that's an easy number to work with and it doesn't cancel anything. So on the left side, if I plug in 1, I get 24 uh, minus 471 plus 1800, which is 1353. If I plug in 1 on this side, I get a times negative 14 squared plus b times 1 times negative 14 plus c times 1. Oh, and I, f I forgot, I know what a and, and c are now, so I can plug those in. So a is 8, and c is 9. So we have 1353 equals 8 times negative 14 squared, which is 1568. And then this is going to be minus 14b plus 9 times 1 is 9. So if I subtract these two numbers from both sides, 1353 minus 1568 and minus 9, get negative 224 equals negative 14b. So b would have to equal negative 224 over negative 14, which hopefully gives us the same coefficient as before. Okay, so whichever method you prefer, this would be our partial fraction decomposition.